Welcome to City Manager. I'm going to cover how the game is played, as well as give you some strategies that will help you manage your city. First off, let's cover the basics of the game. The object of the game is to be the first city to reach a population of 200 or more when a round ends. If more than one player ends a round over 200, whichever city has the highest population is the winner. In the event of a tie, all players continue to play until a round ends with a clear winner above 200 population. At the end of the round, there is a natural population increase from 1 to 6. City Manager was based on a board game, so it's essentially like rolling one six-sided die. Also at the end of the round, revenue is calculated for each city. This is called the R system, which is short for revenue. Each R is based on one six-sided die. So if your city has three R, it's like rolling three dice. I'll discuss this in greater detail later. A $20 stimulus is added to your cash if you ever finish a round with less than 20 in your bank account. This is not a loan, it's just a free gift to help you get back on your feet. Pay attention to who receives the stimulus, as this will help you know who is low on cash. You can use this to your advantage when bidding. Next, let's discuss business cards. Business cards add population to your city. You can bring business cards to your city by being the highest bidder. The three most important things to consider when deciding how much to bid are the population to be gained, the categories, and the revenue that the business will create or lose for your city. From top to bottom, here's an explanation of every part of the business card. The gear icon is your settings menu. It allows you to quit the game. Other features may be added in the future as well. The city icon allows you to see a list of what business cards and people cards are in your city. The business name and website are in the gray square above the photo. All of the businesses are real unless they have a citymanagergame.com web address. The population to be gained by the winner of the card is located next to the population symbol. In this example, whoever wins the Trading Post Cafe will see their population increase by 8. This is the photo of the business. This section shows which categories this business brings to your city if you win the bidding. Each business card can have 1 to 5 categories. The more categories a business has, the more valuable it is. Categories are what attract people cards to your city. People cards have category preferences. These are the things that they like, which draw them to one city or another. The more categories your city has, the more people you are likely to attract to your city. I'll talk about people cards in more detail in just a moment. The property income section is how much money the card will make or lose depending on the population of your city. The revenue is known as R. The key to thinking about this is that every R represents one six-sided die. If you have two R, it's like rolling two dice. Since each die can be between 1 to 6, you can earn or lose between 2 to 12 cash. If you have 4 R, that's like rolling 4 dice, which would be anywhere from 4 to 24 cash. At the end of the round, the game looks at all the R of all the businesses in your city and adds them together. The number of R your city has depends on your population at that particular time. In the property income section of every business card, you will see two red bars, one gray bar, and three green bars. Red means it's losing 2R or 1R at that population range. Gray is the population range at which the business is breaking even. Green means that it's making 1, 2, or 3R in that range. You can see the little number above the bars telling you how many Rs are earned or lost. It always goes from negative 2 through positive 3. To help explain the R concept, let's look at the Clinton Nature Preserve. It only has one range, which is negative 2R. The 0 to 500 means that if the population of your city is between 0 and 500, this card is losing 2R per turn, or 2 to 12 cash per turn, since it's like rolling two dice. Since the game ends once someone reaches 200 population, essentially Clinton Nature Preserve loses 2R the entire game, which makes sense for a park. However, look at Trading Post Cafe. It has five ranges, two are red, one is gray, and two are green. Let's break this down, starting with the gray. Gray is the break-even range, meaning that in a population range of 51 to 89, it will neither make nor lose money. To help illustrate this concept, let's put this in a scenario. Trading Post loses 2R if a city population is anywhere from 0 to 34. Let's say that Trading Post is the first card to come out, and Dylan wins the bidding. If that is the only business that the city of Dylan has at the end of the round, then the city population would be 8. Because Trading Post is worth negative 2R at 0 to 34 population, Dylan will be losing 2R or 2 to 12 cash each turn until his city population gets larger than 34. 
As you can imagine, it's very easy to lose cash early on in the game. Of course, as time goes on, you'll be adding more and more businesses, which will grow your city's population. This will make your city more profitable unless you are adding a lot of government buildings like city hall, parks, libraries, or fire departments, which, like Clinton Nature Preserve, have no positive R and will always lose money. However, these businesses often bring a lot of population, so even though they lose money, they can help you win the game. If you don't totally understand this concept, it's okay. Just realize that the more R you have in your city, the more cash you will make at the end of the round. So which business is more valuable, Clinton or Trading Post? It depends on your strategy. If money is more important at that time in the game, it's probably Trading Post Cafe. If you are close to reaching 200 population, then it's probably Clinton. The bidding section contains a green box which shows the current bid. The city with the highest bid is highlighted in green on the scoreboard. To increase the bid by 1, 5, or 10 cash, just press the positive 1, 5, or 10 blue button. The time remaining circle is how much time is left to bid. Each time a bid is made, the timer resets to 6 seconds. In a single player game, you may also press the timer to pause the game. This feature does not work in a multiplayer game. The cash square at the bottom shows how much cash you have remaining to bid. All players start with 250 cash. If you win the bidding, the number goes down. You cannot bid more than you have. If you attempt to do this, you will hear an annoying buzzing sound and your bid will not register. Each round has eight cards. There is a counter by the scoreboard that shows how many cards are left in the round. The scoreboard shows each player. In a single player game, you are always player number one. It also shows the population of each city and the number of R that the city is making or losing per turn. As you gain new properties, this number is likely to change. People cards represent one third of all cards in the game. You can't bid on people cards. Instead, a people card goes to the city which has the most categories they like. These are called preferences. Here is the Rapunzel people card. Let's look at this in more detail. This is the name of the character. This is the occupation of the character. This doesn't have any impact on gameplay, but it can be humorous to read. The categories area is important. Some characters will have a category associated with them. In the case of Rapunzel, if she comes to your city, you will receive a fantasy category for your city, which will help you attract other people cards to your city who like the fantasy category. Each people card has a population associated with it. Rapunzel brings six population with her when she comes to your city. The preference battle screen shows who wins the people card. You can see all four of Rapunzel's preferences on the left, beauty, fantasy, music, and nature. These are the things that would make Rapunzel most want to move to a city. Categories on the business card are the same as preferences on people cards. On business cards, they are called categories because that is what the business cards have. They are called preferences on people cards because that is what people cards like. Rapunzel wants to find the city that has the most things that she likes. You can see the avatars of the four cities above the four colored columns. That shows how many preferences that each of the cities have. As they fill in one by one, you'll notice that the total column is adding them together. Whichever city has the most in the total column is the one that the people card goes to. In the case of a tie, a random dice roll will determine the winner. As soon as a people card comes up, a preference battle will take place. Let's break down how a preference battle works. Say the first card to come up in the game is Trading Post Cafe. Dylan was the highest bidder and won the card. The city of Dylan now has the restaurant and retail categories. The second card that shows up in the game is the Clinton Nature Preserve. Tubmanville wins the bidding for that business. Tubmanville now has the category of infrastructure, nature, and kids activity. The third card to come up is the people card Rapunzel. She has four preferences and one of them is nature. Nature is the only one of Rapunzel's preferences that match any of the city categories at this time. In this case, the people card would go to Tubmanville because Clinton Nature Preserve gave Tubmanville the nature category. What happens if no city has any matching preferences? This is common early in the game. Let's look at an example. After the preference battle, if all four columns representing the players end up with zero in the total row, a message appears saying no preference match found. This card will return later. In the board game, we called that limbo and set the card off to the side. As soon as a business card comes up which has a category which matches a preference on the people card that is in limbo, then a message pops up announcing that the business card will also attract the person to the winner's city. The winner also gains the population associated with that person in addition to what they will already receive from winning the bidding on the business. P 
People cards can also be negative characters that are attracted to categories in your city. Since you don't bid for characters, you can't keep them from coming to your city. If you attract Wicked Jim DeVito, for instance, your city will lose 8 population. However, there are ways to get rid of someone like him. These are called special cards. They are only about 10% of the cards in the game, but they can be very helpful to you. For example, if you have a negative character like Wicked Jim in your city, you can bid on the police chief or sheriff. If you win the bidding, he can lock up one negative character. In that case, the population is restored. So you would get the 8 population back that you lost when Wicked Jim came to your town. There is also a negative hot air balloon, which you can bid on. Win that card, and you can send 3 negative characters off into another player's city. If it lands in another player's city, their population goes down and yours goes up. But, since it is a balloon, and balloons go whichever way the wind blows, there is a small chance that it'll land back in your own city. There are other special cards as well, such as a giant spider attack or the pity fairy. They all do different things that is explained on the card text. However, I wouldn't want to spoil the fun by showing you too many. Well, I think that covers the basics. Now that you know how the game is played, get in there and start building your city.